Well, praise the Lord. It's 11 o'clock hour, and I thank God for you being a part of the First Pentecostal Family Worship Center. We are located at 4720 Beckley Road in Battle Creek, and we are yet, I believe, in our seventh week of shutdown, of lockdown, amen, of stay at home, however you want to say it. Uh, these are unprecedented times that we're living in, but yet we serve a God who's in control. I was thinking this morning that God is still in control. He still knows what's going on. Matter of fact, God even knew that this was going to happen. And so God uh, prepares us for these situations and we say, amen. Uh, the Bible tells us, I believe it's in the uh, book of Revelations, and the, the Bible says that the angels are there singing and they are saying, amen. And they're praising God in that, I believe it's the 12th chapter in that 11th verse and then the 12th verse uh, it talks about uh, amen to the glory of God with thanksgiving and you know sometimes when you don't know what to say all you can say is amen so be it God I thank you for my valleys I thank you for my trials I thank you for my tests but most of all I just thank you for your grace that is sufficient for whatever I need I'm just thanking God for you and uh, we're going to go into the word of life on today and I'm going to pray praying for so many needs, uh, there are those that are in the hospital, those that are home convalescing, and then we have those who have lost loved ones. Uh, we, if, if we really uh, think about it and reach out, uh, we know someone who has passed away from this virus, and uh, we are praying for you and we're praying with you uh, that God will sustain you, myself and Pastor Hess Sr. Uh, we uh, serve as pastors here at First Pentecostal Family Worship Center, and I just want to thank God for uh, the opportunity to serve during these times. These are just times that God has blessed us, and for that we are grateful. Let's pray on today. Father God, we bless you. God, we thank you for the many valleys, the many mountains that we have had to climb. We thank you, God, for even the season that we're in. For your word tells us, O oh God, to count it all joy when you fall into divers, temptations, or trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, it's working patience. God, we thank you for the word of life today that comes to bring hope, comes to bring peace, comes to bring strength. God, I pray for my brother and my sister now as we focus in on you and your word. For thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's your word that's going to keep us. It's your word that's going to strengthen. When others are going about their daily task on today as if it's just another day. For this is the day the Lord hath made. This is the Lord's day. This is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to take a moment of our time to simply say thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. Lord, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. And we ask that you would let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, for you alone are our strength, and you are our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you and thank you for being a part of the service on today. And we're going to go into the word of the Lord. And I believe that we have a, a word that is relevant, a word that will encourage you and strengthen you uh, on today. From the word of God, the book of uh, Genesis, we're going to go back to the book of Beginnings. And the 50th uh, chapter, it's a, a familiar passage of scripture, but I tell you, I've never seen it this way before as God has uh, shared it with me. And I just want to share what God has given us from the word of God, Genesis 50, verse 16 through 21. It says, and they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, thy father did command before he died, saying, so shall ye say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren in their sin, for they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, Forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for, I am, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. 
Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. For a few moments today, I want to share with you a subject. If we were in church, I would be telling you to turn to your neighbor. Well, you may not have any neighbors today, but you can call up a friend. You can text a friend and tell them they still have time to hear the word of the Lord. But for a few minutes, I want to use the subject, don't miss it. Don't miss it. We find in this world, as we have been looking for the last couple of weeks, everybody's trying to figure everything out from the White House all the way to your house. Everybody's trying to figure out what is going on. We think we know when it's time to come out. We're having rallies and things are going on because people are at, are, uh, at a place of unrest and they're trying to figure out what is going on. And we're trying to be in control, but really we're not in control. Matter of fact, we don't even know how to be in, not in control. And we find that we're also, we're not in charge. And I thought about that for a minute. And, you know, sometimes you think you uh, are in control, but uh, you're really not in control. God is in control. And then sometimes you think, well, I'm in charge. But we see here that God is even in charge. And so in our lesson today in the book of Genesis, if I were to uh, do a, a, a regular uh, exegete of this uh, text on today, if I was to take it and interpret it uh, in the regular way, uh, I would uh, identify the five P's in uh, the book of Genesis. You've heard it before and how that Joseph went to the pit, he went to Potiphar's house, he went to prison, he went to palace, and finally he found his purpose. But that's where God just wrecked my little theory on today and, and really gave me the purpose of this message of don't miss it. But you see, the purpose is not our purpose, but it is God's purpose. Joseph's life was a myriad of many events that took place. And when you look throughout scripture from the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter, all the way to the 50th chapter, you'll see where Joseph had twists and turns in his life. And we find that many times we are trying to figure out, well, what does God plan for me? But I heard one preacher say it like this, it is not important to know the plans of God, it's important that we understand the purpose of God. What is God's purpose? It's kind of like GPS, when I'm going down the road and it's telling me to go one way, but then I turn, it recalculates. And that's what God does. God is able to recalculate our life, even in the, the darkest times and the storms of life. We are able to see that God has not only a plan, but he has a purpose for our life. Have you ever asked the question, what's my purpose? I know I have. We see here that we're in the book of Genesis. It is the culmination of the story of the Bible. It is the Bible. Uh, scholars say many times say that this is the seed plot of the Bible. It's a great story. If you've ever read a great story, usually the first chapter reels you in. It asks a bunch of questions. And then throughout uh, the, the book, you see different pieces coming and going until you finally make it to the end and you see the culmination. That's a good book. They often say a story does not need one plot. It needs at least three plots to intertwine, intertwine you because our attention span is so short. About every 20 minutes, there has to be an act of violence or, or an act of passion or, or some kind of comedy or, or something to, to reel us in because if not, we'll lose interest. Well, I submit to you today that when we look at the life of Joseph, we see a bunch of twist and turn. Life is really, my God, about our twist and turns that make us, that provide who we are to be. And so we see here that everything that we need is found in the book of Genesis. And for the seven, eleven, uh, the, 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 the seven last weeks, I wrote down some questions that perhaps you've heard and I have heard. Uh, question number one, what's going on? What is going on? I just don't understand it. Uh, when will this be over? Perhaps that was one of your questions. What am I supposed to do? No work, no sports, nothing to keep me busy. For a minute there, the weather was bad. We couldn't even get outside, couldn't even work in the yard. The first few weeks, we were down to the bare necessities. Everybody was looking for toilet paper. I just wish I would have known I would have put some stock in toilet paper. Everybody was trying to prepare for the worst. 
And as a result, we find our days have been just coming together. Some days we wake up, we don't know what day it is. Praise God, because they seem to just flow together. What caused this? Who caused this? That's one of the uh, questions that we ask. Is it the wrath of God or is it Satan? We are asking these questions. But God specifically told me to tell you, don't miss it. Today's text is the culmination of Joseph's life. For you see in this word of God in Genesis 50, it's the last chapter of Genesis. And Joseph is, is probably about one third of the whole book of Genesis. His life is of something of importance. But we find here that he's dealing with tragedy. He's dealing with life's turns. And the turn that he is dealing with is the death of his father. His father has died. We find in Genesis 50, not only does his father die, but he dies in this one chapter. So we don't know exactly how long this chapter spanned, but we see two great life events occurring. Isn't that how life is? That sometimes we're in one event and then here comes another one. We can't even get out of the other event. And so his dad had died. At one point, he didn't even know if he would see his family again. If you go back and look at his life, if we would just go back and peekaboo at his life, for the Bible says that his brothers threw him away. His brothers, they distanced themselves and, and, and left him in a pit. And because he was in the pit, they thought he was left for dead. But we find that God had a providence. God had a, 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 a purpose for the life of Joseph. Have you ever seen someone that has had trials and tests and, and it seems that they were not going to make it? But those people are the ones that somehow, some way, they come through the test. I never forget it. My father, we were talking one time and we were talking about uh, our uncle, his uncle, his last uncle uh, that lived and how all of the other uncles and aunts, they were well and they were living life to the fullest. Many of them lived into their late 80s and uh, 90s. My grandmother lived to be 93 and uh, they were just living. But my uncle who had been sick all through his life, but he was the last one to pass. He was the last one to go. And so we have to understand that God has a purpose and a plan for our life. But when we look at the, uh, the life of Joseph, hallelujah, we find that Joseph, when he was in his purpose or in his life, he thought he was going to lose his father forever. But the Bible says that God allowed him to be resolved or to come back into the knowledge of his family. But when he came back, the Bible says that he became second in command. And when he came back, his family came uh, towards him. You'll have to read it. I don't have time to, to go through the whole lesson. But the Bible says that his family started living with him. Uh, I don't know. I praise God. It might be similar to where we're at now, where our family is with us 24 hours a day and seven days a week. But we find here that his family was with him. And it seems as if everything is going lovely. But all of a sudden, his father dies. And when his father dies, his brothers, they think of something to say. And they say in the 16th and 17th verse, let's say, let's tell Joseph that daddy told us to tell him that uh, uh, he is to be nice to us because a daddy would have wanted that. But how many know that daddy perhaps didn't even know? We don't know if daddy knew that the brother, what the brothers had done, but now daddy was gone. Their protection was gone. Oh, I'm going somewhere today. Don't miss it. And so the Bible says that God was trying to prepare Joseph for this moment. And he asked the question, am I in the right place? Am I in the right place? And for the saints of God here at First Pentecostal, you've heard me say it many times that when I saw that verse or understood that verse, I would always go to the point that perhaps God is trying to test Joseph to see if Joseph realizes that, that was, it was God that brought him here. But as I begin to look at the passage of Scripture, I begin to see it is not necessarily just that. But what Joseph is saying here is that vengeance is God's. And so as a result, this is simply a test. And I ran across a passage of Scripture in the book of Psalms 105, verse 17 through 19. It says, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with feathers. He was laid in iron 
until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. And many times when we look at this passage of scripture, where uh, many authors would say that Joseph was being tested because he was not ready, my God, for this day until this day came. Have you ever been in a situation and you think you're ready for something, but you're really not? But it is during the test, it is during the trials that God builds up your character. His character had to be built up before he could come to this place. And so we see here that he had many missions or many things that was going on. He had a gift of being able to interpret scripture or interpret dreams. God was with him, but that was not his divine mission. As pastor tells us, that was his shadow mission. I'm going to show you in just a minute. But the Bible says that there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. What's my purpose? What is God's purpose? Well, I want you to know that you are in the hand of God, and God has a purpose for your life. Don't miss it. God, again, allowed his dad to die, but as his dad died, they had to deal with the issue that had been put away for a long time. One thing about it, when you die, there are no more secrets. Oh, I'm going to talk to you for a minute. There are no more secrets because secrets destroy relationships. My God, you don't know if somebody is doing something for a particular purpose or if they have a hidden agenda. But when we get secrets off the table, when we, when we begin to really be vulnerable and really share, and this is where they're at. They're at a time of vulnerability. They're at a time where they have to share their true feelings. Why? Because daddy is gone. And it's an opportunity to be naked. And that Lord took me to the word of God, the book of Job, the first chapter and the 20th verse, 21st verse. It says, and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, when you die, there are no more secrets. My God, you don't bring anything into this world. I'm just going to interpret it. You don't bring anything into this world, and you take nothing out of this world. When you die, it's separation time. You really see what matters. Nothing. Nothing matters but your life and your soul when you die. What have you valued? What have you put before God? Nothing matters. But we see here that God wants to show us something, and we don't want to miss it. But the Bible says that we are studying hope this month. And the Bible says that when we as people of God, we have no hope, we lose our passion. And can you imagine these young men not having hope because now their hope had died, their daddy had died. The scripture says hope deferred or prolonged makes the heart sick. But when the desire or dream is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. When you lose hope, you dry up, you lose your desire. But we find here that Joseph was the one that was going to bring life to his brothers if they would listen. I don't want you to miss it, but the question was asked by Joseph as we hasten to the finish line. He says, am I in the right place? Am I there in the right place? But we see here that he begins to reflect. And if we go all the way back to Genesis 45, and verse 5, it says, Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourself that ye sold me thither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Did you catch it? Joseph was put in the position to bring life to not only Egypt, but to his family. And then he says in verse 8 of chapter 45, he says, So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father of Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. In other words, God had to test me, as we read early in Psalms 105. He had to test me and take me through the situation to realize that the dream that I had way back yonder 
My God, I didn't understand all of the tests and the trials that I had to go through. But God has created me for just a time such as this. My God, today, you're in this trial, you're in this test, this pandemic that we're facing. And you're wondering, how am I going to get through it? But God has created you for this purpose. My God. And so I begin to see, maybe I've got it. But then I ask the question, do I really have it? Because I ran across this 20th verse of Genesis 50. This is the heart of the matter. And he says, but as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Notice he says the same thing that he says in 45. My God. And I begin to look at that and I said, now, God, what are you saying? Because many times I realized as I was reading that passage, it hit me that we say that verse wrong. We say what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. But notice it does not say that. It says, but what ye thought evil against me, his brothers, but God meant it unto good. What was he saying? He was saying that no matter what others say, God has the final say so. We're putting our time and our trust in people. We're trying to look good for people. My God, you see people on the video and they're trying to look good and make sure everything is just right. Make sure everything is just set up. My God, but how many know that God sees us? We do not want to miss what God is saying, my God, and as a result, we're looking to people, but God has the final say. We're trying to dodge people. We're trying to prove people wrong, but we don't want to miss what is going on. For this lesson is Joseph's swan song. This lesson today is the heart of the life of Joseph. We find it in this book of Genesis, the 50th chapter. It is a great message because it is Joseph's finest hour. It's testimony time. And he said, you thought you were going to destroy me. You thought you were going to pull me down. But God had another plan. Can I stop right there? God has another plan for your life. I don't care if you're, if you're sick today, if you're going through today, whatever your trouble is, your financial condition, your mindset, you're depressed, you're down, you're out. But I want you to know, my God, in the word of God, we read it yesterday in Isaiah 42 and 3. He says that a bruised reed, my God, he will not destroy in other words, no matter how down you are, God will pick you up and he'll turn you around. And so we don't want to miss the lessons today. Millions I've spent on trying to develop and understand our purpose. We change careers. We change lives. We change relationships. We're changing, trying to figure out who am I? We get us a new hairdo. We get us a new makeover. My God, we lose 50 pounds. We have all of these things going on, and we're trying to find out what is my purpose. But we don't want to miss it today because God has a purpose. What is God's purpose in the midst of our trial, in the midst of our life? My God, we're trying to get through our test, but don't you know life? is a test. Life is not promised to be easy. My God, some days you're in the valley. Some days you're on the mountain, but you have to trust God. My God, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. And so the ultimate question is, what is God's purpose? I believe that God's purpose is to show his love. For you see in the word of God, his brothers, Joseph's brothers, we're looking backwards. But how many know you can't look backwards? You've got to look forward. We had an artist to die this week by the name of Troy Sneed, and he wrote a song. He wrote a song only 52 years of age. He died from this virus, but he, had a, he wrote a song, and the song was entitled Move Forward. My God, sometimes we have to just move forward. We've got to cut our loss. We've got to stop bickering. We've got to stop fighting. We've got to stop having regrets. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, but we've got to believe God that if God brought brought me to this place, he's taken me to another place. And so the Bible says that Joseph had a mission. He had an assignment. What am I saying today? God has an assignment for you. But Joseph is saying 
in me was the gift of life. I almost missed it because we quote that 20th verse which says that you meant evil for me, but God meant good. And we stop there, but we've got to read the rest of the story. This is where it gets good. Stay with me on today. When we see this word, he says, I have been kept so that I can help you to stay alive. Do you realize that some people, the only life that they are experiencing is the life that you have that the life that you give but let me stop right there some of you are leaning on your parents and leaning on your relatives for life but one day they're going to die and you need a life that can be leaned on Jesus Christ on Jesus Christ you need to have a personal relationship you need to experience the life that's what Joseph was trying to get them to see because the brothers had their life to depending on their daddy. My God. And now they were saying, well, who do we turn to? And they turned to Joseph. But Joseph let them know, I don't have time to look backwards. I don't have time to go backwards. I've got to press toward the mark. I've got to press towards God's purpose. And as we see here, he began to speak to them. And I said, now God, what are you saying? How can we transition this passage of scripture to today? How can we cross the bridge? And God gave it to me. Just like Joseph was a type, he was a type of Jesus Christ. He was a life giver to that family. But God understood and I began to look at it because I looked at the book of Hebrews the 11th chapter oh I'm bringing it home now in the 22nd verse we know that uh, Hebrews 11th chapter it's the book of faith it's the chapter of faith when I want to know about faith I go to Hebrews the 11th chapter now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen my God for without it the elders were not able to obtain a good report in other words if they didn't have faith they would not be able to go through and so it lists the best parts of each person in the Old Testament and some in the New that went through tests. And Joseph is found in the 22nd verse. I never had seen it before, but I looked at the passage of Scripture and it spoke to me and it began to tell us that Joseph was there for a purpose. For it said in the word of God that Joseph, when he was there, he told them, he says, I want you, my God, that when you come out of Egypt and you go to the promised land, I want you to take my bones and I want you to bury my bones in the promised land. I want you to bury them at a place called Shechem. If we were to read about Shechem, we would see Shechem is a place of, a, a, a place of challenge. It is a place where a decision has to be made. My God. And so we see here that he was giving them life in the midst of their death. What am I saying? You are going through your valley. You are going through your test. But as a believer, you must give the world life. You must speak life into the people of God because what is my purpose? Your purpose is not your purpose, but your purpose is God's purpose. How does my purpose fit into God's purpose? And so we see here, he began to speak life. For the scripture says that many times we look at Jesus and who Joseph was an example of. We look at Jesus as just a great man. But the scripture says it like this. It says, search the scripture for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Don't miss it. He wants you to experience God's kind of life. Jesus is the only way to experience life. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. That seems to be a negative thing, but it really is a positive thing because it says, but as to many as receive him, to them gave he the power or the ability to become the sons of God. So your questions as we hasten, your theories, what you think is important, how much money will I make? How many positions will I have? What title will I have? It doesn't matter. The question is, have you received the provision of life? It was Joseph's 
final hour, but it was important that Joseph spoke into their life. And so Joseph said to them, he says, he says, when you get to the promised land, oh, I'm coming. He says, when you get to the promised land, I want you to understand that you're to bring my bones. And I said, God, what are you saying on today? Because when we look at the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, y'all praying for me. When we look at the book of Hebrews 11th chapter, we see that there are people who did great things. But we see here in the 11th chapter in the 22nd verse that when it speaks of Joseph, it's not what he did, it's what he said. Oh, my God. And I begin to look at it, how that our words have power. And he spoke into their life. And as he spoke into their life, this would be the culmination of his life. Spurgeon said it like this. He says, the Holy Spirit in this chapter selects the good out of every man's life. He says, I should hardly have expected that he should have mentioned the dying scene of Joseph's life as the most illustrative proof of his faith in God. It does not tell us, my God, dear brothers and sisters, that we are very poor judges of what God will most delight in. In other words, it's not your trophies, it's not your accolades, my God, but it's when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. For the Bible says that Joseph looked forward, my God, can't look backwards. He understood his purpose, that he was a part of God's plan. What am I saying? In this pandemic, you are a part of God's plan. Don't miss it. God has purpose for your life. God wants you to be the liaison to bring others to Jesus Christ. When you see others, my God, out in the street, don't just talk about, oh boy, this sure is trouble. This is a problem. But you need to begin to tell them that you need Jesus Christ. You need to know the Lord. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior because it says that no matter how good we are, we he comes short of the glory of God. But he says if we will receive him, he will in no wise cast us out. And so we see here that Joseph is speaking to him and he's letting them know that you have to not worry in the midst of your trouble. And so I close it on today. My time is up. I close it on today and I look at the word of God and I jump to the 14th chapter of St. John in the midst of of this test in the midst of this trial we have confidence in God's word I'm sorry I got loud today but I feel the presence of God he says let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me and then he gave me a scripture that I have never preached on before in Luke the 21st chapter he says men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And I looked at that, and I said, God, what are you trying to say? And he said, look at verse 25. He says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And he began to have me to write down famine, and war, and pestilence, and moral decay, and pandemic, and terrorism, and the stock market plunging, and all of these things going on. What can we do? Don't miss it. It's your opportunity to experience Jesus Christ. It's your opportunity to experience God's purpose. It's your opportunity to understand that God has a plan for your life. It's your opportunity. Today, I want to extend an opportunity of salvation. I had my, one of my uh, cousins to write me this week, and he's trying to witness. He's not trying. He is. He's witnessing to one of his loved ones, and he asked me for scriptures. And I begin to share with him how that man is born in sin and shaping in iniquity, and how that we cannot save ourselves no matter how we try. But God committed his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus Christ has come 
that we might have life. Saints of God, you that don't know Christ, I want you to know that Jesus has a purpose and his purpose is to be fulfilled in your life. But you must accept him as your personal savior. I want to ask you three questions like I asked a couple weeks ago. Number one, are you willing to put your faith in Jesus Christ? Number two, will you accept God's son? Will you accept him as paying the price for your sin? Number three, will you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Will you receive him as your Lord and Savior? You see, Joseph understood that God had a purpose for his life. Why did he take some and leave others? I can't tell you that answer, but I know while I am here, my purpose is to give life. My purpose is to cause others to see the value of who Jesus really is. And so we see here as Joseph was getting ready to die, he spoke into their life and said, my number one purpose was to bring life to you until you got to this place. But now you must make a decision. Are you going to dwell on the past or are you going to dwell on your future? Let's pray on today. Father God, we bless you. We thank you and we give you glory. God, we give you glory because you're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all glory. And we honor you on today. You that don't know Jesus Christ on today. You that have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. Come on, come on with me. Forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord. For I am a sinner and I need your salvation. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again. And because of that, I can have eternal life. Come on, say, Lord, I receive your eternal life. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for coming into my heart. I receive you and I thank you in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, we quote it all the time, but if, that, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, confession simply means to come into agreement and believe in thine heart. Where does the change take place? It takes place on the inside, the heart, the seed plot of your life, your soul, your will, your mind, your emotions. You give it all over to Jesus. And as a result, the Bible says you will have or experience eternal life. You have passed from, to, from death unto life right away. For the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And now, God, I pray for those who know you, but yet we've lost focus. We're missing the mark. We're missing what you're trying to say in this situation. We have heard great messages. We have heard just outstanding messages that encourages us to go through it and realizing this is not a vacation and to, to allow what God allows and, and my God and to have hope in dry times. And we've had all of these messages, but today you, your message is don't miss it. Don't miss you. Don't miss your purpose. God, help us to get back to that place that even when we come out of this pandemic, we don't forget that you have a purpose for our lives. God, touch my brother, touch my sister, encourage even now, strengthen, heal, and deliver. Set the captive free. God, we thank you that by your blood we're healed. Go there to the hospital, deliver now. Set free. Touch that sister, that brother in Jesus' name, the one that is depressed by your stripes. You are already healed. Begin to rejoice. Begin to bless him. Begin to give him glory. God, we thank you. We honor you. We adore you. We love you. God, we know you to be real. We don't have time to play, but I hear in your word that you have kept us alive so that we can give life to others through Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you now and we bless you and we count it to be so in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Listen, I want to hear from you. 
Praise God. You can go to our website, www.firstpen.org. Praise God. You can every day, Monday through Friday, we're on for, at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. And then on uh, Saturday, we're on on Saturday at 6 p.m. live on the web. And then we're back on Sunday. You can write to us if you'd like to support, amen, the ministry. You can go online to our website, www.firstpen.org, and you can give securely. Or you can just write us. We would love to hear from you and, and let us know that the prayer that we're praying, the words that you're receiving have been life to you. Pray for us as we pray for you and know that we're coming through this. Why? Because we don't want to miss what God has for us. What God has for me, it is for me. And until next time, may God richly bless you. And we thank you for being a part of the First Pentecostal Family Worship Ministries right here in Battle Creek at 4720 Beckley Road. God bless you. We'll see you the next time.